uh, pastor shared about we're going to Africa. We, we were given the privilege to go over there. We're going to Nigeria in February. We'll leave 2nd of February, come back the 12th. And we get to speak in a faith conference over there, praise God. And then, then I'll speak about 12 hours in Rainbow Bible Training Center there in, in uh, Nigeria. And so help train some ministers up, praise God. So, uh, as you sow, you're really sowing into that. Praise God. He mentioned you might want to help, but that's what uh, a lot of these off this offerings are going to go towards, and it'll help us to get ready to get over there. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many of you have your Bibles with you? Praise God. Amen. Well, lift them up. Just say this after me. Lord Jesus, you are my Lord. You are the living Word. And you've given unto me the written Word that I might know you. I believe that I receive this Word imparted into my heart and into my mind. I receive it as the absolute truth that will set me free. I thank you. You, Lord, for speaking into me everything I need to be victorious. I place a demand upon the anointing of God to give unto me in this service everything I need. I receive it. I'll be a doer of it. Give you all the praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I want you to turn to Luke's gospel with me. We're just going to minister a little bit here and just impart some things to you about the authority of God and walking in the authority. You know, we, we came in here to speak on the spirit of faith, and we need to get the anointing of faith back into us, not just the knowledge of faith. Not just, you know, principles of faith, but the spirit of faith. Amen. And 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, we having the same spirit of faith. You know, God gave you that. What you've got to do is stir it up and use it. Amen. If you don't use it, it doesn't do you any good. It's like we were talking about, you know, the sword of the Spirit in one of the services here. And, you know, Ephesians 6 there talks about the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. Amen. The, and the Amplified said the sword that the Spirit wields, which is the Word of God. W-R-D, there's rhema, the spoken Word of God. So the weapon of the Holy Ghost is speaking the Word. You speak the Word, and it becomes a sharp two-edged sword, goes forth. Some people say, well, you know, it seems like I'm not winning. That's because you're not using your sword. <laughs> Amen. A lot of people are doing hand-to-hand -hand combat with the devil, and you should be using your sword against him. Amen. Use God's weapon, and you'll get God's results. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 10, the Lord Jesus is speaking to the disciples here, and he, and, and he pulls out some more. And it says in verse 1, After these things the Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent them two and two before his face in every city and every place where he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth labors into his harvest. Go your ways. He says, Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Notice here, we'll make some comments, read on down some more scriptures here. But, but the Lord here is grabbed 70 more besides the 12. <laughs> Notice that throughout the Bible, and you read that all through the Gospels, the Lord is constantly recruiting and training. Amen. And in fact, in John's gospel, the, 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 you get over there and read that 14th chapter of John. You know, Jesus says over there, he says, if you believe on him, the 12th verse, he said, the works that he does, you'll do. Amen. Greater works than these. Somebody said, what are those greater works? Well, just start doing the works and then let him take care of the greater ones. Amen. But notice what he said. If you believe on him, we're to do his works. Then he went on down through there and said, if you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Well, that wasn't asking and pleading. That word ask there really brings with it demand. In other words, he said, if you'll start standing up and do, demanding your rights in my name, I'll see to it that they come to pass. Now, we're not demanding of the Lord. He's not the one who's holding anything back. We're demanding of the devil. Amen. Notice here, then, the Lord pulls these 70 in, and he sends them out everywhere where he's going to go. Now, that means this. If God sent you here, then it means he wants to come here. Amen. Let's just read it like that. He sent them out two by two everywhere where he himself was going to go. Amen. In other words, the Lord sends us in because he wants his presence there. Amen. He wants his anointing there. Amen. And he's working through us. He's trying to get a point across here. Jesus isn't going to show up in Greensboro himself and do it. He shows up through us. Amen. 
He shows up to you. He shows up to every believer. He's recruited us to do His works. Amen? Praise God. And so when we begin to carry forth His Word, carry forth His anointing, we bring His presence into a place. Now notice here, He says in verse 3, I, I got to meditating on this a little bit this afternoon, and it just kind of sprung out at me. It says, Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Well, you know, we read that a lot of times. We think, whoa, boy, you know, we're in dangerous territory. But, you know, really... If you take the two, he said, I'm going to send you forth as lambs in the midst of wolves. Well, wolves, you know, they're out to tear and destroy and eat and kill and pillage and plunder. Amen. Bring destruction. Isn't that what a wolf does? Yeah. But a lamb all throughout the Bible is always used for provision. Amen. Amen. In Exodus 12, when God wanted to bring the children of Israel out of bondage, he told them to get a lamb. And he said, take that lamb and kill it in the evening. And he said, take the blood and put it on the doorpost, lentils of your houses. And he said, and, and then eat the flesh. And he said, that blood will protect you from the death angel. And we know that they were all healed when they ate the flesh. Amen. So that lamb was for salvation. That lamb was for blessing. That lamb brought deliverance. Amen. Jesus is the lamb of God that came and took away the sins. Every time you read about lamb, well, you find out that there's provision in the lamb. The, the, the wool of the lamb was used for, you know, covering and, 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 and help. And so Jesus is speaking to us, and basically what I believe he's saying here is this. The world is full of wolves. People are going to take, people are going to destroy, people are going to cut you, people are going to hurt you, people are going to try to devour you. He said, I'm going to send you out with a different attitude, a different personality, a different purpose. You're going to go out to be a blessing and not to hurt. Amen. You're going to go out to bring deliverance and not destruction. You're going to go out and bring provision and not take away. I'm going to send you out as a lamb. In other words, I'm sending you out to bring provision and blessing and help and, 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 and peace to people in the midst of a place where everybody's trying to destroy them. Just imagine if you and I would be operating as lambs, as God's lambs, and we would understand that doesn't mean we're going to be slaughtered. We taught on that the other day, other night, remember, in Romans chapter 8. He says, you know, all these things are coming against us, and, and we're counted as sheep for the slaughter, or lambs for the... No, and all these things, we're more than conquerors. Hallelujah. So he's not telling these disciples, you need to go out here and realize that, you know, you're at a disadvantage. No, he's telling them, you go out with a different personality. What would happen to this country if we'd stop acting like wolves and start acting like lambs? What would happen in this country if we'd stop taking and start giving? What would happen in this country if we stopped hurting and we started healing? What would happen in this country if we stopped, you know, pulling people down and started lifting people up? <laughs> now, uh, you know, you say, well, where are you coming up with this? Well, let's just continue to read on down. Verse 9, let's pick it up down here. And he says this, And heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God has come near you. Now look at that. He says, now I'm sending you out. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs. I'm sending you forth with a different attitude, a different personality, a different approach, a different purpose. And he says, you're going to be out here where everybody's trying to take. And he says this. He says, now when you go out, instead of hurting, you heal. Instead of going out and bringing people in bondage, preach the gospel of the kingdom to them. Amen. Tell them the kingdom of God has come near them. Hallelujah. Somebody said, what do you mean the kingdom of God? Kingdom is the, in, in the Greek just means the rule, influence, and domain of a king. Yeah. And so what did he tell them to do? He said, go and tell them that the new king is showing up, and his rule and influence and dominion is about to come on the land. Hallelujah. And they can get into this other kingdom where there's going to be peace and healing and deliverance instead of operating in the kingdom that's run by wolves. Amen. So these disciples, they go out and they minister. And, you know, I find this, that, that the Lord Jesus has an appointed work for us all, doesn't he? Amen. He says, I want you to get the right attitude. And then he says, well, there in verse 2, he says, I want you to pray because there's a great harvest. There are great opportunities out there. He said, I need laborers. I need people that will work it. I need people that will get involved. I need people that will locate who they are in me, find out what they're called to do, and realize that they're not at the disadvantage because they're going to be more than conquerors as they go out with me, and they're going to come up against sickness, and they're going to heal it. They're going to come up against destruction, and they're going to deliver people out of it. They're going to come up against darkness, but the light in them is going to be greater than the darkness that's facing them. Hallelujah. 
And Jesus says, everywhere you go, I'm going to go. I'm going to be right there with you. I'm going to cause great things to take place. Amen? You and I have an appointed assignment from the Lord. We are to be a laborer in His harvest. The church has to get out of just, you know, our little uh, uh, side issues. And we have to get out of, you know, how can we just be liked and get back in to realizing this world is full of wolves and nasty things and God has anointed us to go out and make a difference. Hallelujah. And we don't have to be mean like everybody else. We don't have to be bad like everybody else. We don't have to be angry and, and ripping and snorting and tearing and see who can get the most of it and who can get the biggest piece. But we can actually go out in the kingdom of God, the anointing of God, the influence of God, and we can go out and bring healing to this place. Hallelujah. And we can introduce people to a whole different anointing and a whole different lifestyle. Praise God. That's what the church's purpose is. Amen. And so the Lord, you know, he tells them to go do this and, and sends them out. And so they go out and preach. Verse 17. Let's drop down here. They've been out doing what the Lord told them to do. And verse 17 says, And the 70 returned again with sad stories about being beat up and faith failing and this confession stuff don't work. No. No, that's the reverse standard version. Amen. Huh? No, that's not the way it reads. Praise God. Look what he says. And the 70 returned again with joy. Woo, glory to God. They came back with joy. Look at that. Saying, Lord, even the devils and demons are subject unto us through your name. Woo, glory to God. You know what that tells me? When the 70 returned here, they came back with joy and a good report. You know what we're supposed to do? You know what church is really all about? We come to church and we learn of our assignments from God. We learn of our authority that God has given us. We learn who we are in Christ. We learn how to act. Then we take the word that we get in church and we go out during the week and live that word and set people free and it operates in our life and we see God doing things in our lives, in our homes, on our jobs, in our communities. And then we come back to church the next time and celebrate the victories that we got outside these four walls. I'm going to say it again. I know it sounds like it's, it's a foreign language, but you need to get a hold of this. What I'm seeing here is the Lord Jesus grabs these people. He teaches them who they are in Christ. He gives them authority because he said, go heal, go preach. In other words, he's delegating authority to them. He's given them the power to make influencing. They can instantly see the authority is delegated power. It is delegated influence. Jesus is saying, I am anointing you with the power to go out and influence situations. Influence outcomes. I'm giving you the authority to go out and act in my behalf and see results that I would see if I was doing it myself. Yes. Do you understand this is his ministry and we get to be a part of it? So therefore, if it's his ministry, we ought to find out how he does it and do it like he would have it done. Yeah. Right. Amen. Whenever I train people to work in my ministry with me, here, here's, the, here's the, the rules that I give them. I say, now, you are an extension of my ministry. This is how I do things. Amen. And if you're going to be an extension of my ministry, I'm going to teach you how I want it done. And now you're going to do it as if I was doing it myself. Yeah. Right. Because you're representing me. You're working in my ministry. You're submitted to me. So therefore, I'm going to show you how I want it done, and you go do it. Because when it's done, it would be as if I did it with my own hands. Because you're representing me. And if somebody says, well, I don't want to do that, then I say, then you need to find who you're supposed to work with and go get with them, because here is how I do it. Amen? Well, we do Jesus the same way. The Lord says, here's what I want you to do. Well, and here's how I want you to do it. Well, Lord, I don't like doing it that way. But you can't, do you, you know, you, you're never going to succeed like that. These 70 didn't go to the Lord and say, well, you know, Lord, those are good ideas. But, you know, I believe if we did it this way, we'd have better success. And after all, I am anointed now, and I've got this ministry. And I'm a, No, you're not. It's his ministry. Remember, he's giving you the authority, the right, the privilege to go out and act in his behalf. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so we come to church and we listen and we find out how Jesus does things. And we find out how he would do it if he was going to witness somebody. We find out how he would do it if he was going to minister somebody. We find out how he would handle it if he was going to deal with that situation. And we learn and get trained that way and get his anointing on us and go out in his behalf and do it his way. Amen? Amen. And when we do that, we get results. These disciples come back and they say, Lord, my God, we went out and did it exactly like you told us to do it, and even demons were subject to us. They obeyed us just like they would obey you. Look at that. Now, how were they subject to these disciples? Well, we were the 70 chosen. <laughs> and since we were the 70 chosen, we are special vessels, and that's why these devils submitted us, because they knew we were special. We were, we were not just you common lay people out here. We were the special anointed ones, and we went out, and because we're so valuable to God, the, even the de no, 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 even the demons were subject to us through your name. What were they doing? What are they saying to us? They weren't out there doing it in their own ability. They were doing it under His authority. Yes. See, folks, we as the church, if we're going to change our cities and if we're going to change the immorality that's in this nation and bring people back to Christ, we can't be wolves and win wolves. That's right. Mercy. That's good. We have to be lambs in the midst of the wolves and show them that love beats hate. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Are you hearing me? Yes. We have to show them that the kingdom of God is greater than the kingdom of darkness. We have to go show them that righteousness is better than unrighteousness. We need to go show them that God's grace is greater than their sin and that Jesus is Lord and, that, and we have to operate under Him. In other words, we have to go out representing Jesus. We have to come under His covering, under His autonomy. We have to come under His authority. We have to be influencers. And we have to say, you know, they came out, what would Jesus do? We need to come back and say, how would Jesus handle this? Because you see, if I'm representing Him, I have to act like Him and do it His way. And they came back and said, Lord, we went out and did what you told us to do, did it how you told us to do it. And we didn't go out on our own. We went out under your authority representing you, and demons were subject to us. Now listen to what the Lord says, verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. I believe there's a twofold meaning here. I believe that in the original, when Satan was cast out of heaven, Jesus was there and saw it happen. But at the same time, I believe this. He said, go everywhere, I'm going to come myself, right? And so he sent them out, and I believe every time these people spoke the word, every time they declared the kingdom of God, every time they used the name of Jesus, every time that they set somebody free and somebody got healed, somebody got delivered, I believe the Lord was right there in the midst of that, beholding that. And every time they used his name, he saw to it that the devil hit the ground. <laughs> How do you know that? Because Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name in John 14, verse 14, he said, I will do it. They're out in his name. I believe everywhere they used his name, his anointing flowed. And I believe every time he used his name, they used his name, Jesus said, now devil, drop. Demon, drop. Sickness, drop. Listen, if we could get the revelation that we're representing Jesus, and when we use his name, it's as if Jesus himself was doing it. Oh, my goodness, folks, we're going to start seeing results in the kingdom of God. Amen. We're going to start seeing wolves turn into lambs. They're going to trade in their fangs, hallelujah, and start growing some wool. Amen. Now, let's read on. Verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power or authority, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. The Amplified there in verse 19 reads it like this. Behold, I have given you authority and power to trample on serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability over all the power that the enemy possesses, and nothing shall in any way harm you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, he's given us authority and power to walk all over the devil and his demon forces. 
You and I have authority in Jesus over the kingdom of darkness. You and I have authority over sickness. We have authority over disease. We have authority over sin. We have authority over demons. We have authority over poverty, lack, and want. We have authority over tormenting ideas and thoughts and, and, and arguments. Are you listening to me? See, Jesus said, I'm giving you authority over all the power of the enemy. And nothing that he has, no weapon formed against you that he has will prosper. Hallelujah. I'll get you through that. Somebody says, well, how does that authority come? Verse 20, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. In other words, don't get all puffed up and haughty just because you cast the devil out of somebody. Yeah. Don't think you've arrived because somebody got healed when you prayed for them. He said, don't, don't, don't rejoice in the results. Rejoice that God is doing things. Take joy, be joyful, give good testimonies. He said, but if you're going to rejoice and be exceedingly happy, he, he said, let me tell you what you rejoice in. Rejoice in the fact that your names are now written in heaven. What's he saying? He's saying the thing you want to rejoice about is the thing that's given you the power and the authority and the right to get, to get these results. Your authority comes through your being born again into the kingdom of God. You have authority because you're a child of God. Somebody said, I thought I got power for being the child of God. No, Acts 1 8 says, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You get power from being filled with the Holy Ghost, but you get authority to use that power from being saved. Yes. Every born again child of God, under the sound of my voice right now in this room, wherever they may hear this, has the authority to use the name of Jesus and tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Amen. We have the delegated right and privilege and honor and authority to go do the works of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you want to walk in the power, he said, I give you authority and power there. Well, I want to tell you something, folks. That's why he told the disciples to tarry in Jerusalem until they were endued with power from on high, until they were baptized in the Holy Ghost. We need to get born again. Then we need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Then we have the authority and the power operating together. Hallelujah. I always tell everybody, I didn't get baptized in the Holy Ghost because I wanted to speak in tongues. I didn't know anything about speaking in tongues. I was a Southern Baptist, and I, I read, I, I was sitting in my pastor's office, and I saw, we're, you know, speaking in tongues. It's a Southern Baptist convention. I asked him all about it. And he told me, <coughs> he said, I said, I, I said, what is it? He said, where'd you see that? And I said, I read it in the magazine on your desk when I was calling the youth. I was ministering over the youth in the Baptist church. And he, so he swallowed real hard a couple of times, and he said, well... He said, uh, he said, that's called the baptism in the Holy Ghost. I said, well, what's the baptism in the Holy Ghost? He said, well, it's a second experience of God's grace after you're born again. I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, well, what, what's it do? He said, well, he said, the Bible says you receive power when, when you receive that experience. I said, you receive power? Yeah. He said, yeah. And see, I've been seeking God for power. And so my eyes kind of laid up. And, and, and so he said, he said, well, the best way to explain it to you, he says, it'll take an old deadhead Christian and turn him into a fireball. <laughs> well, whenever he said that, I thought, man, I'm already a fireball. Wonder what it'll do for me. Hallelujah. <laughs> And my eyes just lit up, and I'm thinking, man, no, man, i got to have this. I don't know. I don't have any idea what it is, but i got to get this. Hallelujah. And, and then he saw that, I, that he lit me up, and so he looked at me and says, but, but, but now wait a minute. You don't, you, we don't do that here. I said, well, why don't we do that here? I'm sitting there thinking, my God, we got a whole church full of deadheads in this place. I mean, you know, why wouldn't you want them to go from deadhead to fireball? <laughs> He said, it splits churches and divides churches, so we don't do it. And I said, well, I understand that. And he said, we good? I said, yes, we are. And I walked out of there, went home, said, Bonnie, we got to get filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> we got to find out how to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. And you know, the reason I want to get baptized in the Holy Ghost, I was going out witnessing. I was on college campus at that time, and I was witnessing people, handing out tracts, telling them about Jesus. James Robinson came to Johnson City, and I took... Ten guys that was on the football team out to the, to the meeting, got them all saved. And then the next night I went out and there was a bunch of other guys I'd invited. And I went up and led them down, praise God, and to the altar. I was all the time wanting to get people saved. Hallelujah. And I thought, you know, if I can get the power of God, and I read Acts 1, it makes me a witness. Woo, glory to God. i got to have this. And I looked everywhere high and low to find somebody who knew anything about it. 
Didn't, couldn't find anybody. I mean, you know, if I, if I heard you spoke in tongues, I'd follow you around, see if I could catch you. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And, and so, you know, I, I wasn't necessarily but in the tongues thing, but I, I, I read in Acts 2, 4, finally there, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, spoken other tongues. I didn't have any idea what that was, but I just told the Lord, I said, I want it all. I want the power. I want your power. I want the Holy Ghost to give me the power because I want to be a witness for Jesus. And that was all I sought for was the power. I want the power. I want the power. And so finally, I, I, I was down in, in Cookville, Tennessee uh, in, in June of 77. And, and turned on TV, and there was a man named Kenneth Hagin on TV, on the PTL Club. And a man named Kenneth Hagin Jr., another one named Ken Stewart. And, and so I heard him. I heard Brother Hagin give his testimony. And I thought, glory to God, I turned to Bonnie. And I said, he got what we're looking for. She goes, what? I said, I don't know what it is, but he's got what I've been looking for. I got I, I, I to get, I got to find out more about him. So we picked up, we went back up and stopped off and um, picked up a book, a couple of books. I was sick all the time. So I found me a book on keys to scriptural healing. I thought, boy, I need that one. And then I'm sitting there and I found seven vital steps receiving the Holy Ghost. And I thought, boy, I probably need that one really bad. So I'm going to get that one. I'm going to get that one on healing. And then the guy that was running the bookstore came over and he started talking. I said, now, is this the Kenneth Hagin that's out in Oklahoma? He said, that's the very one. I said, well, I, I want to ask you, uh, you know, these, these are his books? I said, yeah. I said, well, I want to get these two. And, I, and then he got around. I said, you know, I'm, I'm going into the ministry and I, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm looking for some place. I'm going to go get trained. He says, we ought to go there. I said, well, maybe in a year or so after we, you know, we got to save up some money. I just graduated from college, and Bonnie and I would gotten a job, was seeking God on the next step, and actually was looking at maybe going to Liberty, where, you know, we were Baptists, so we were going to Liberty, you know, and, and maybe there and, and stuff. And so uh, he said, well, just use your faith and go this year. Well, I'm Baptist. I never heard anybody say, use your faith. <laughs> he could have gone, blah, 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 this year. <laughs> Because I didn't know what faith was. I mean, I've never heard faith. you got to be kidding me. And so I looked down, there's this book called How to Turn Your Faith Loose. I said, I better get that one too. <laughs> yeah. So I picked up all three of them, praise God. Yeah. Amen. And that was on a Monday, praise God, And we, because we'd come back through from Cookville. And, and so, that, you know, then on Tuesday... That, that week. It was June the 7th. Hallelujah. I, I took that book on receiving the Holy Ghost, baptism of the Holy Ghost, and read it and studied it out and prayed and got filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And, and I said, Lord, I want it all. I heard Brother Hagin say, you know, in the book, I read where he said he spoke in tongues. I want the tongues. I want this. I want that. And so I said, I want it all like he got it. Hallelujah. And I prayed in tongues. That's the first person I ever heard speaking tongues is me. Amen. And then I, I went and told Bonnie. I prayed in tongues for about 20, 30 minutes there. And then I went down and I told her, I said, uh, I got filled with the Holy Ghost, spoke in other tongues. She goes, oh, because she's more Baptist than I was. Hallelujah. <laughs> and she knew if I got it, she's going to have to get it. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, we worked it and worked and worked, and I shared with her about it, and she read the book, and two weeks later she received. Hallelujah. And, of course, we went to school. But the thing was this. I wasn't looking for the tongues. Mm -hmm. But once I figured out it all came in the same package, I thought I'd just get it all. Hallelujah. But you see, we ought to be seeking the Holy Ghost today for the power. Because we got a world full of darkness out there, and we need power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Amen. And authority, the right to do it, comes from being born again into the kingdom of God, because now you're a part of God's kingdom. But the power to get it done comes from the baptism in the Holy Ghost. So we need authority and power operating in us so we can go out and spread the gospel of the kingdom. What is the gospel of the kingdom? That Jesus is already Lord, that salvation is already provided, that redemption is already yours. You, don't, you, you can live in the world but not be of the world. You can be in where the kingdom of darkness is, but you can be in another kingdom right here in the midst of it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And you see, we have to be passionate, and, but we're going to have to do it under what? Under the authority and the guide of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're representing Him. Yes. Yes, sir. Because you don't have any authority in yourself. You don't have any power in yourself. Remember over there in the book of Acts when those seven sons of Ziva, the, the, the high priest sons, you know. I mean, if anybody should have it, I mean, these, these boys, their daddy is the pastor. <laughs> And they found him a demon-possessed guy and went to him and said, We adjure you in the name of Jesus of whom Paul preaches. Come out. 
Remember what that demon told him? said, you know, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but you're in trouble. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Jumped on them and whipped them. Amen. Because uh, they didn't have a right to use the name of Jesus. They didn't have the authority to use the name of Jesus. They weren't a part of his kingdom. Amen. So we get in the kingdom of God, we have the right to use the name of Jesus. We have the authority to use the name of Jesus. We have the authority to represent Jesus. And God's kingdom is greater than the devil's kingdom. Are right. oh, you listening to me? Light always dispels darkness. Amen. This room is naturally dark. But the moment you turn the power on, the lights come on, the darkness flees because light possesses the room. You and I have the authority to walk in any dark situation and believe God and release light into it and change the atmosphere of that situation. Amen. 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 Come on, we're living so beneath who we are in Christ. You and I need to get a hold of this, folks. We need to walk in this. And you need to understand something. This is not the 12 apostles of the Lamb doing this. This is 70 others. Okay? That's right. These are disciples. These are everyday people that, 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 that have been following Jesus close. Amen. You know how you get the anointing? You get close to somebody. How do you get warm in a fire? The closer you get to a fire, the warmer you get. Isn't that right? And you see, here's the thing with the Lord. You know, some people come in a room, you got a fire in the middle of the room. They'll stand way over on the corner, and they'll stand back there and shiver. They just got enough warmth coming off of that fire to keep them from freezing to death. And that's all they want. Some other people come on in that room and sit about halfway, and they start feeling okay. But, you know, half of them's warm, and half of them's not. Then you got some people that just get right up around that fire and just stand there and just, oh, you know, just woo, hallelujah. And, and you get around them, their skin's warm, their face is glowing, hallelujah. Well, that's the way it is with the Lord. You can get as close to the Lord and just as on fire for the Lord as you want to be. You can stay back there. I want to tell you, I don't know about you, I just don't like standing around the fire. I jump in it, hallelujah. Because it's a fire that won't burn you up. Right. Yeah. Amen. Blessed big God, you can be a burning bush for Jesus. Amen. But you've got to press in. That, that's what he's saying. These guys, they pressed in. That's why he picked them. Jesus didn't go out here and, and find somebody that hadn't been in his meetings and give them authority. These are people that had been pressing in. You want the Lord to start using you? Press in. You want to start seeing the power of God operate in your life? Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Speak in tongues. Yeah. Amen. Some of you do you well to get so full of the Holy Ghost that you run around the building. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Drop on the floor and flop like a chicken sometime. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> just shake you out of all that whatever and just get you free. Amen. Amen. Get you where you don't care about what anybody else thinks. Yeah. Lord, thank you for just setting me free. Amen. Yes. Now, 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 somebody says, well, you know, what's the Lord's attitude about this? Well, he told them to rejoice because they're in the kingdom. Rejoice, your name's written in heaven. Rejoice because you know God and God knows you. Amen. All of this is flowing out of your relationship with Jesus Christ. You can't have any of this if you don't have a good relationship with Jesus Christ. And so then he goes on down here in verse 20, or verse 21, he says this, In that hour Jesus rejoiced in spirit. You know how to get the Lord rejoicing? Go out and do his works. Yeah. <laughs> Start walking in his authority. Start doing what he's asked you to do. Start representing him, praise God. Start doing what he would have done. You know, I, I remember hearing Brother John Osteen, Pastor Osteen, you know, uh, he years ago, before he went home with the Lord, he was telling a story. Uh, just, just I always thought it was funny, and but brought a good point. And, and and he had prayed with this lady in his church to get a job, and so she'd gone to this place and got her job. And after you know a, a certain amount of time, wasn't too long, she came to him and said, "Pastor, would you pray for me?" He said, "What is it?" She said, "Pray for me that God will give me a different job." And he said, well, we prayed for you just not too far back for you to get this job. What's wrong with this one? She goes, well, everybody that works in that office where I got hired are sinners. And, and, and they found out I'm a Christian. And, and they do awful things to me. And they just torment me all week long. Said, In fact, they'll come in and put dirty books on my, my thing and, and write things. And, and they'll get and say dirty jokes out where I can hear them. And so I just sit there and cry. And, and, and I just want you to pray for me that, that God will get me a different job where I won't have to put up with this. And he looked there and said, I'm not going to do it. 
No, I'm not going to do it. God put you there for a reason, and it wasn't so you'd sit there and cry and let sinners run over you. She said, well, what am I going to do? He said, you get bold in the Lord, sister. And next time they do something, you just jump right up and praise the Lord. She said, you think I can? He said, yeah, I'll lay hands on you, anoint you, and you go do it. So he prayed with her and had boldness. Well, you know, they, they, that was on a Sunday. And so Wednesday he noticed there, you know, uh, she was in church just praising God and worshiping the Lord, had a whole different expression. After the service she came up, she said, Pastor, let me tell you what happened. He said, what happened? She goes, I got the victory. Well, how'd you get the victory? She said, well, you know, I, I went in there on Monday morning and said those three girls, those, those three ladies that, that always torment me, said they came in and said they stood around my office and they started telling what all they went to the bars and how they'd done this and they was using foul language and they was laughing and looking at me. And she said, I started to just tear up. I started to just, oh God, I can't do this anymore. She said, then all of a sudden I remembered you said that God put me there and I was supposed to just praise the Lord in that thing. Thing. So she said, Lord, pastor, pray for me to be bold. So she said, I just scooted my chair back, jumped up on my desk, threw up my hands, started praying in tongues and shouting and praising the Lord. <laughs> he said, what did they do? She said, they knocked each other down and everything else trying to get out of that room. She said, they scurried out of there like somebody throwing a snake at them. She said, they was just out. And she said, you know, I just shouted and praised God even louder when they took off running. <laughs> Amen. She said, he said, what else? She said, well, she said, then I sat down and started doing my work. And she said, when they'd walk by and look in, she said, I'd go, whoo, Jesus. And she said, they'd run down the hall. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And she said, he said, well, he, she said, now the next day, she said, they stayed away from me all Monday. And she said, on Tuesday, say, they'd see me coming and they'd dart down the hall and get away from me. She said, but you know what happened today? He said, what? She said, Every one of them, one by one, came and told me they apologized and they were wrong and asked me to pray for them. She said, you know what? I believe I'm going to get them all saved and turn that office into a Holy Ghost office. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to me, folks. We, we're going to have to learn. We're supposed to be lambs in the midst of the wolves representing Jesus. Walking in our authority. That's what makes the Lord rejoice. Rejoicing that God has chosen people like you and me to go out and change people's lives. Yes. Do the works. The church has to get back to this. Yes. Listen, the charismatic renewal is dead. It's gone. Yeah. And the charismatic renewal started in the church because there were a lot of denominational people like me that was wanting more of God, and God poured the Holy Ghost out and brought us out. If that, if that church didn't want to go, God brought everybody that wanted to go with him. But listen, the church has lost people and the world around us is now. The next move has to be the Great Commission. The next move has to be the church taking the gospel out and preaching about salvation and telling people that Jesus is their answer. Amen. And it's not going to be done just by those in the pulpit. It's got to be done by the 70 others. Hallelujah. Amen. Disciples, people that take Jesus to the, on the job place with them, take Jesus and are not ashamed. We don't have to be abrasive and mean, but we do have to let light shine. Amen. Amen. Not be afraid to tell people that Jesus is my Lord and they let them know, praise God. Amen. And you can do it. I gave my heart and life to the Lord real strong right before Bonnie and I got married. In the last two years of college, I, I witnessed everybody on my team. Amen. And they knew me. They'd come in and, and start talking about some things. And, you know, I wouldn't embarrass them or anything. I'd just kind of walk off. I walked in one day, and a couple of the guys were talking about going to a bar. And I stood there for a minute and heard their conversations. I thought, well, you know, I, I can't be a part of this. So I just walked over to my locker. One of them came over and says, what's wrong? Are you too good to talk? I said, no, but I am too good to t listen to that stuff. I said, I don't do that anymore. And I said, if you were smart, you wouldn't. Amen. Amen. We had a revival of the church, and we brought 30 of our football team into that. Me and one other guy did, and got them all saved. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You can make a difference. Yeah. We've got to get that passion back. This is what it's all about. That's the spirit of faith. Spirit of faith isn't you getting the biggest house in town, driving the fanciest car in town, having the most money in town. The spirit of faith is so you can make a difference, bring the kingdom of God and righteousness and peace and holiness and, and the anointing of God and set people free from Satan's deceptions. Yeah. 
you do that and you won't have to worry about anything else. Jesus said in Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And all those things are what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, what you're going to have. Amen? We've got to get passionate about this stuff again. Somebody says, well, do we have that kind of authority? Did you ever read Matthew, the 28th chapter? Let me read it to you out of the Amplified. It'll help you. Jesus has just been raised from the dead. He appears to his disciples in verse 18. And the Bible says, And Jesus approached and breaking the silence said to them, All authority, all power of rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Woo, glory to God. What's that saying? There is nobody or nothing any greater than Jesus in heaven or on earth. Jesus' authority and power and influence is in heaven and on earth. Amen? Amen? Somebody says, where else? I'm not concerned about anywhere else. Heaven and earth is my realm. As long as it works on earth, that's all I need to hear. Praise God. Amen? Amen? Just as long as I know I can approach heaven and get my answer to my prayers and I can bring that power on earth, I don't care whether it works anywhere else. Amen. Amen. I got my answer right there. He's Lord on earth. Glory to God. That's where I live. Now verse 19, what's he do with that authority? Go then and make disciples... Look at that. Of all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I've commanded you. Now listen to this. And behold, I am with you all the days, perpetually, uniformly, and on every occasion to the very close and consummation of this age. Amen. So let it be. You know what he's saying here? All authority, rule, power, influence, the right to act has been given to me in heaven by my Father and on earth. I am Lord in heaven and I'm Lord on earth. I'm final say in both realms. Now I'm taking all of my authority, all of my power, all of my rights that have been given to me, and I'm going to delegate it to my church. And I want you to do this. I want you to go in my behalf, in my stead, in my name, and go to all the nations of the world and bring them out of darkness into light, bring them out of the devil's power, over into the power of God. And he said, go in my name and disciple them and teach them these things I'm teaching you. And as you do this, these things, lo, I am with you. A lot of people say, I just don't feel the presence of the Lord anymore. When was the last time you witnessed somebody? When was the last time you cried out to God to pour His Holy Spirit out upon your city and break down the walls and the barriers and the strongholds of the devil and pull the blinders off of people's eyes and your heart was so pained by the sin around you that you you was moved to cry out to God, make intercession? See, you're involving yourself in the works of Jesus. And he said, the more you get involved, the more I'm going to be with you. You want my presence in your life? Get a burden for the harvest. Don't just think about it. Do something about it. Start praying about it. Start pleading the blood of Jesus. I mean, start claiming souls. Start, Start believing God to turn people's lives. And then say, Lord, hear my, send me, hallelujah. Give me an opportunity to witness. I'm going to do this and meditate on what we're preaching to you and just get it down in your spirit. Glory to God, Lord, you've given me the authority to do this. This is who I am. This is my purpose in life. I'm supposed to do this. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And the Lord will bless you for it. Now, look real quickly to Mark 16. We'll close this down. Mark, the 16th chapter. (laughs) Somebody said, in verses 15 and 20, I heard somebody say, well, you know, that's not a part part of the original Greek. Well, it's in my Bible. Amen. And I don't read Greek anyway, so I don't care if it's in there or not. (laughs) Amen. I mean, everybody's trying to pull something out of the Bible because they don't want to do it. Amen. I was watching one of the old Billy Graham classics. I thought it was so good what he said. He said, everybody out here today is preaching that all religions lead to God. He said, I found out that most of the people that are speaking that stuff don't want to get to God themselves. (laughs) Amen. They don't want to live for God, don't want to meet God, don't want to go to God. So they come up with an excuse, oh, I can live any way I want to and get to God. No, you can't. Jesus said, I'm the way. He didn't say, I'm thinking about the way. He said, I am the way. He said, I am the truth. I am the life. 
He said, you can't get to God except by me. Somebody says, you're intolerant. No, I'm righteous. Yeah. I'm fully persuaded. Yes. I believe in this stuff, folks. Amen. Yeah, I've watched it work too many times, praise God. We were over in Kentucky in the church, and I went over there, and, and, and we preached on Sunday through Tuesday night, and they wanted me to teach on the Holy Spirit and His gifts. And so I broke it down, and we was ministering. I was going to minister on Tuesday night on the gifts of, of the power and, and teach on healing and pray for the sick. Well, on Monday night, we had a breakthrough. During that service, at the end of the service, it just seemed like God wanted me to have people. And so the whole church came and knelt at the altar and wept and cried and prayed. And the anointing came in, and it was starting to get a little late. And being pastor, and for all these years myself, when I go out, I'm sensitive to time. And I, it was starting to get a little up there where it was starting to get on the... The, you know, the, the, the critical mass of we need to let the kids out. And so I, I, the anointing was still there. So I turned to the pastor and I said, you know, I'm going to let the pastor come on up. And he came up and he said, listen, if you need to go, go. But, you know, the anointing of God's still here. We're just not going to, you know, cut it off. And so people just kept praying. And we kept ministering to them. Well, on that Sunday morning, a young lady would come in there with her husband, and, and she couldn't hardly walk. They was helping her in, her leg and, and, and stuff, and something that attacked her, and she, she just couldn't hardly, you know, they, she'd been in a wheelchair for a couple, I guess, a few days, and they'd finally gotten up where she could walk with crutches and, 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 and stuff and couldn't put any pressure on it. And, and, and so the Lord spoke to me when they came in, and he played on the band, he played the guitar, and, and the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm going to heal her. This week. And so I thought, well, in my mind was Tuesday, you know, I'll lay hands on her and she'll get healed. Well, that night, she, she came that night on Monday night, and they just had to help her up on the platform. They practically had to care. And she sat down at the piano and was playing the keyboards, help them out during the services. And so then we're praying. The pastor went over and prayed, and Bonnie was, and I was sitting there, and, and I'd walk down, and the Lord said, I want you to go over and minister to her right now. So I went over, and I said, now, we're gonna, I'm going to lay my hands on you, and the Lord's going to heal you. The gift of faith came on me. And I'm speaking to her, and I said, now, and, and so I ministered to her, and I said, now then, when I get done praying, you're not going to see any difference. But when I get done praying for you, you're going to go home. I don't want you to pray about it. Don't think about it. Just go home, go to bed. When you get up in the morning, you'll be perfectly well. Laid my hands on her, prayed for her. No difference. They carried her off the platform. <laughs> pastor picked us up the next day. We he was going to go out to lunch. And so he picked us up and he said, you know, I hadn't called uh, Brother Son, so I wanted to call and see how his wife's doing. And so he's getting ready to call and the phone rings. And this young man's on the other end. You can hear he's pulling the phone back. And he says, oh, uh, she, she, she's what? Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, bye. I said, what was that? He goes, it's her, it's, it's, you know, the young, I said, yeah. He said, that's her husband. said, all he was doing was on the other side screaming, she's healed, she's healed, she's healed, she's healed, she's healed. And, and what happened, she got, he got up early that morning. She's still in bed. He went to work. She got up, swung around. When she swung around, she was totally healed. All the symptoms were gone. So she got up and danced around the bed a little bit and ran up and down her steps in her to, and then, then put on her sweats and got her, had a little baby girl, and put her baby in a stroller and ran her around the block twice. Yeah. And then called her husband and said, my God, I'm healed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And came back that Tuesday night and testified about it. Praise the Lord. Amen. And God moved. And, and, and so, you know what? That whole little town, it, well, it's not a huge place. But, but, you know, we went out to lunch and, and, and the next day before we was leaving, and, and uh, everybody's coming up and saying, we hear God's moving in your church. God's moving in your church. Well, you know what? That's, that's what the, this is all about. Yes. Yes. It's not about us getting glory about anything. It's about people realizing God's moving again. Yes. This nation has to know that God is real. Yes. We've got to tie back into this thing, folks, and see it happening. Are you listening to me? Yes. Nothing changes people's minds like results. And Jesus has called us to have results. Look here in Mark 16. Grab a hold of this and make it your calling. And he said unto them, Go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs, everybody say signs, shall follow all the apostles and prophets. No, no, it's not what it says, is it? That's the religious standard version. Amen. No. What's the real version say? And these signs shall follow them that believe. Yeah. Believe. Believers. Why? Jesus said, Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. You're a believer. 
because you're a believer, you rejoice because by being a believer, all these other things are available to you now. These things don't make you a believer. These things happen because you are a believer. Amen? What's going to happen, Lord, in my name? Everybody say, in my name. my name. In the name of Jesus, under the authority of Jesus, operating under His authority, under His guide, under His autonomy. Look what He says. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents if they drink anything deadly. They shall not hurt them. In my name they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They'll get well. Look at that. Now that's either true or not. I believe it's true. Now look what he says. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven, sat on the right hand of God, and they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. I remember one time I just I hadn't been out of Raymond very long. First little church I was I was We started having healing rallies uh, the first Saturday night of the month, and so I'd done two or three of them. And we looked out, and and I took a church of thirteen people, got all thirteen votes, hallelujah. But anyway, you know, and and so we we got it going, and 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 I looked out, and we had a little room off to the side, and I was back here praying before service. And there was about 100 people out there. And I thought, whoo, glory to God, this is the biggest crowd that we've had here. I mean, this is amazing. And I thought, oh, God, I don't feel any anointing. Oh, Lord, if I don't go out and do something, they won't come back next month. Oh, Jesus. Lord, i got to have something. Lord, they, they, somebody's got to get healed or they won't come back. Lord, help me. And I just kept praying that way, and the Lord didn't listen to me at all praying that way. <laughs> and finally, in my complaining, fussing, and, and pleading with God in doubt and unbelief, He finally came to my rescue, and the Lord said, read Mark 16, verses 15 through 20. Isn't that amazing? These, these uh, doubt and unbelief theologians say that's not in the Bible, but Jesus told me to read it. <laughs> Either they missed it or He did. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on His side. Amen. And I said, Lord, I don't need to read those verses. I can quote them to you. He said, I didn't tell you to quote them to me. I told you to read them. Yeah. So I reached down, grabbed my Bible, opened it up, and I started reading it. And I said, and I got down there, you know, and, and these signs shall leave. And, this, and they went forth, and the Lord worked with them, confirmed. I said, that's it, Lord. I said, I need some, I need some things confirmed. I got to have some signs and wonders tonight. He said, read Mark 16, 15 through 20. I said, I just read it. He said, read it again. So I read it again, went down through there. And I got to the end. I said, that's it, that's it, that's it. i got to have some of these things. Lord, what are we going to do? He said, read Mark 16, 15 through 20 again. And this time I said, you know, Lord, I'm not stupid. I'm a little slow, but I, I'm not stupid. I, I'm smart enough to figure out that I'm not getting something here. <laughs> what is it that I'm not getting here? Would you show me what you're trying to show me? He said, yeah. He said, read that first verse here. He said, I said, he says, go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He says, who's doing the preaching? I said, I am. He said, okay. He said, now read verse 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere, and the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. He said, who confirmed the preaching? I said, you did. He said, if you'll do your part, I'll do my part. Quit trying to do your part and my part. Amen. He said, you think you can go out and preach and lay hands on them? I said, yes, sir. He said, then I can heal them. That's all you need to know. Amen. Close the Bible up and say, glory to God. <laughs> because you see, I don't, I'm not the healer. Right. Jesus is the healer. I'm not the deliverer. That's why he was telling those 70, don't rejoice because you had these results. Rejoice because you have a relationship with me. Because as long as you're in relationship with me, these things will continually happen in your life. It won't just be an event. It'll be a lifestyle. Amen. I'm going to say it for you again. Amen. Don't make your Christianity a one or two time event. Amen. Make it a lifestyle. Amen. I'm not satisfied just to get somebody healed once in my life. I want to get people healed all the time. Amen. I want to see God move all the time. I want to see him move today like he did 30 years ago. Yes. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. This is how you do it. Two keys right here. Number one, what are you going to do to release the power of God? He said, preach the gospel. You need to speak the word. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He confirms his word. What's the second thing? In my name. You got to do it in his name. Use the word and use the name of Jesus and trust the Lord to work with his name and his word. 
and you'll see signs and wonders in your Amen. life. Amen. 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 One of the greatest testimonies, I, I share this, and this, this happened in 1979. It's been that many years ago, but it's still one of the, 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 the testimonies that thrills me the most. Had a, a, I was preaching in, in a little church, and we built it up, and, and a, a lady, of, I guess she was, what, about 73? And she go, would go down in Florida during the winter and come back in the spring. Well, I'd taken that church over in, in, in uh, the end of August of 78, and I'd been preaching there. Well, she came back up there, and I'm teaching. I, I preach, you know, the same thing I'm preaching now. And so uh, she would just say, oh, our little preacher. Well, I was, what, 24 years old, you know, something like that, 25. And so, so you know, I was her little preacher. She's 73 and I'm 24, you know. She can call me her little preacher. And she'd go, our little preacher, he's so good. He's teaching me all kinds of things. Well, she comes to church on a Sunday and she goes, uh, can I share a testimony? And she is just a sweet little, little, little lady, you know. And, and, of course, yeah, sure, praise God. She said, this past week, she said, I was in my kitchen and I slipped and fell, and she said, when I hit on my hip, I heard it pop. And pain ran up and down my leg and, and in my back, and, and I just couldn't move. And she said, the thought came to me, well, nobody's going to know anything, and this is Monday, and, and what am I going to do? And, and, I'm, and it said, then thoughts came, you're going to lay here and die. And the pain was hurting me, and I couldn't reach my phone, and I couldn't get up. And she said, what am I going to do? And she said, here I am laying here in that floor, just wondered, oh God, how am I going to get through this thing? She said, all of a sudden I heard my little preacher's voice. <laughs> and my little preacher said, you're a believer in Jesus' name. You can even lay hands on yourself if you need to, and the Lord will heal you. And so she said, you know, I said, that's right, I'm a believer. And she said, I just reached over there and laid my hands on my hip and said, in Jesus' name, I demand to be healed right now. She said, you know what happened? Said the power of God hit me and said the anointing God flowed through me. Next thing I knew, I stand in my kitchen floor, just my hands up, praying in tongues, worshiping God. She says, I'm so thankful I came home this spring to learn the Word of God and said, that Word works. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. A believer just took the word and believed it worked for her. Amen. She wasn't a preacher. She wasn't, she's 73 years old and learned the truth and got a hold of it. Amen? Amen? Praise God. I taught my mom faith. I've gotten her to move over in faith. And my dad, we got him saved. Praise God. And now they're in church all the time. My mom's 77 uh, years old. She'll be 78 in May. And, and, and so uh, she, she uh, plays the piano for the church. Well, she was having problems with her ears. She, she'd had a problem when she was younger. And so she got uh, to the place where she woke up on a Sunday morning. All she could hear was roaring. Well, she learned to read lips. And so she could communicate, but she couldn't hear anything. And so she said, Lord, now you know I'm playing the piano for the choir and for the, the worship service. And so, you know, if I can't hear them, I can't play. So she said, Lord, I believe that whenever I get around to church and whenever it comes time for us to play the music, I'll be able to hear. And she said, you know, I went to the church and said, I walked in. The pastor came up, shook my hand, said, I read his lips, said, hi, how you doing? Said, all I could hear was just a roar. And so she said, you know, she said, I walked up there and looked, and it's time for church to start, and the song leader stepped up, and she said, I walked up and said, I sat down on the bench, and still nobody knew. She said, I couldn't hear anything. She said, I reached out and put my fingers on those keys and said, my ears popped, and boom, I could hear everything just playing. She looked at me, she said, now, son, that's faith, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah, Mom, that's faith. Hallelujah. That's how, that's how it works. Praise God. These signs follow them that believe. Do you hear me? If you believe it, it'll follow you. It'll work in your life. I'm telling you, folks, I came here to speak the spirit of faith in you and to stir you to let's get back to doing these things. This is our book of Acts time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're writing the chapters in Acts now. Let's not let those ones in the early chapters outdo us. Uh -huh. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, that's right. When we read the final book, let's make sure that our pages read as exciting and as powerful and as anointed as the pages that came before us. Amen. Yes. And it'll do it. And you know what? It doesn't, God's not looking for super dupers. He's looking for believers. Amen. People who will rejoice because they have a relationship with Jesus. Yes. You're just living out of your relationship with Jesus. That's all it is. I'm just living out of my walk with Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm not some special thing. He's just my Lord. I live every day with Him. When He tells me to lay hands on somebody, I do it and He heals them. 
He tells me to go tell somebody he loves them. I go tell him he loves them. You know what? He convicts their heart. He brings them in and gets them saved. He tells me to lay hands on somebody that's seeking him more, and he pours the Holy Ghost in. Remember, John said Jesus is the one who baptizes with Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Even on the day of Pentecost, whenever Peter's preaching, he said, he said, this which you now see and hear, he's poured out the Holy Ghost on. So even Jesus baptized them that day. So he's still baptizing people in the Holy Ghost sitting at the right hand of the Father. He just uses our hands to let it flow through. Amen. 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 My question is, who wants to see a move of God? Yeah. Who wants to be a part of that move of God? Amen. Stand with me. Hallelujah.